Let's take a look at class example number two and express 15 degrees as a difference of two special angles and hence determine the exact value of sine 15 degrees with a rational denominator. Since we're looking for sine of 15 degrees, we want to think of, we're trying to find sine of 15 degrees. And so what we're looking for is we're looking for two special angles that when we take the difference, this A minus B, that A minus B is going to equal 15. What could those values be? Well, I'm going to choose 45 and 30 because 45 degrees minus 30 degrees is 15 degrees. But you can also choose two different ones that whose difference is 15 degrees. For example, 60 and 45. But let's continue with this one. If sine 15 will be sine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. So with that in mind, then we can continue using the identity, the difference identity for sine. So this is equal to sine of 45 degrees, cos of 30 degrees, minus the cos of 45 degrees, and the sine of 30 degrees. So in this case, what is sine of 45 degrees? Well, that's root 2 over 2. Then we have cos of 30 degrees, which is root 3 over 2, and then subtract cos of 45 degrees. Well, what is the cos of 45 degrees? That's root 2 over 2. For sine of 30 degrees, that's the y value for the shortest angle, so that's 1 half. When we simplify this, we have root 2 times root 3, which is root 6. 2 times 2 is equal to 4. And we have minus root 2 over 2 times 2, which is 4. So the end result is that we have root 6 minus root 2 over 4. And that is our exact value for sine degrees. What I'll do now is I will just go through the other uh, form of it. Let's see, if we had sine of 60 degrees minus 45 degrees, that 60 minus 45 will equal 15 degrees. And I'll try and do this quickly. So no matter what you choose, whether you choose 16 minus 45 to get 15 degrees or 45 minus 30 to get 15 degrees, as long as you're using special angles where you know the exact value of the trig ratios of those angles, then you will end up with the same result. Class example 3 tells, asks us to express 5 pi over 12 as a sum of two special angles and then show that the cotangent of 5 pi over 12 is equal to root 3 minus 1 over top of root 3 plus 1. So let's see if we can express this as a sum of two special angles. Well, 5 pi over 12. So consider 5 pi over 12. So we have 5 pi over 12. And the number 5, we can think maybe about 3 plus 2. So let's see if we can do 3 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12. That is equal to 5 pi over 12. But let's see if this simplifies into one of the special angles. So 3 pi over 12 is pi over 4, which is good. And then we have 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. So I think we found it. We have 5 pi over 12 is equal to pi over 4 plus pi over 6. Well, with that in mind, then let's see if we can show this. Well, what I'd like to do is first find the tangent and then tangent of 5 pi over 12 and then take the reciprocal of it. So the tangent of 5 pi over 12 is equal to the tangent of this a plus b of pi over 4 plus pi over 6. So that is equal to, by the identity that we know, it's going to be equal to tan of the first, pi over 4, plus tan of the second, tan of pi over 6. And that's over top of 1 minus tan of the first, and then tan of the second. So let's see if we can simplify some of these, these values here. This is equal to tan of pi over 4 is 1, and then plus tan of pi over 6. Well, what is pi over 6? That's 30 degrees. Now the sine of 30 degrees, or pi, sine of pi, pi over 6, is equal to 1 half. And the cos of pi over 6 is equal to root 3 over 2. So 1 half divided by root 3 over 2, 1 half, and multiply recipro reciprocal, so 2 over root 3. And we get that this tan value is 1 over root 3. So this is 1 plus 1 over root 3. And then we have some things on the bottom. So this is 1 minus tan of pi over 4 is 1. 
and 10 to pi over 6 again is this 1 over root 3. So let's bring this over here and then we can say well this 10 of a plus b here is going to be 1 plus 1 over root 3 and that's over top of 1 minus 1 over root 3. Let's see if we can continue to, to simplify this. This is going to be equal to, uh, just working with the top, we have root 3 over 3. So this is going to be root 3 plus 1 all over root 3. And on the bottom, we have root 3 minus 1 all over root 3. So we can notice that this is the same denominator here and here. So that is going to cancel out. So this is going to be equal to, we have root 3 plus 1 over top of root 3 minus 1. Well, we're almost there. And take a look here. This is just really the flip version. But remember, this is equal to 10 of pi over 4 plus pi over 6, or in other words, 5 pi over 12. Now remember that the cotangent of an angle is equal to 1 over the tangent of that angle. So that means that cotangent of 5 pi over 12 is going to be equal to the reciprocal of tan of 5 pi over 12. So that means that cotangent of 5 pi over 12 is root 3 minus 1 over root 3 plus 1. And there, or we've shown that this is actually equal to cotangent of 5 pi over 12. What about class example number 4? Let's simplify the following. We have sine of 100 degrees times cos of 10 degrees minus cos of 100 degrees times sine of 10 degrees. Now at first glance, taking a look at this, it may look confusing to solve or confusing to simplify. But if we notice, here we have this pattern of sine of an angle, then cos of a different angle, minus cos of the first angle again, and then sine of the second angle. So if we consider this A as 100 and this B as 10, then it seems like it looks very much like you have a sine A, then a cos B, and then that's subtracting a cos A and a sine B. Well, in that case, we recognize this pattern. This is equal to sine of A minus b. So in this case, if we use a as 100 and we use b as 10, we can actually say that this should equal the sine of a or 100 degrees minus 10 degrees. So this should be equal to the sine of 90 degrees. And we know what the sine of 90 degrees, the 90, sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. Now we can also use our calculator and see, well, what would this actually equal? But we should be able to recognize this pattern and see that this is equal to sine 90 degrees, which is equal to 1. So to be thorough here, let's just plug this in. We have sine 100. We're in degree mode. Sine 100 cos 10 minus cos of 100 and then sine 10. Let's see. We should get 1 and we do. Okay, so taking a look at the next one, we have cos of 1 quarter pi minus an angle, and then we have cos of 1 quarter pi plus an angle minus sine of 1 quarter pi minus the angle and sine of 1 quarter pi plus the angle. Now if we take a look at this, it looks like we have this cos of something, of an A, and then we have a cos of a different one, a B, and then we have, that's minus, and then we have a sine of that actual first one, A, and then another sine of something different. Well, we have cos, cos, minus sine, sine. Well, can we recognize that pattern? That, that actually looks very much like cos of A plus B. Well, if that's the case, then we can simplify this and say that A, that A is equal to this first one, 1 quarter pi minus theta, and that B is equal to the 1 quarter pi plus theta. Well, if that's what a and b are, then we can say this is equal to cos of a plus b, so 1 quarter 
pi minus theta, and then we have a plus sign, and then we have the other one, which the b is one quarter pi plus theta. So this is our b, and this is our a, and that's what that whole thing is equal to. Well, we can simplify this now. We can say this is cos, and we have pi over 4 minus theta, and then there's a plus sign. Here, I'll just make it uh, black here, so plus sign. And then we have another quarter pi, and then we have another theta here, plus theta. And then it looks like we can cancel some things out. This minus theta and this plus theta will cancel out, and pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is pi over 2. So this simplifies then into cos of pi over 2. Now in degrees, this is 90 degrees, so the cos of 90 degrees, or the cos of pi over 2, is equal to 0. Well that's pretty cool, we were able to simplify this really nasty looking expression. Uh, and we simplified it very nicely using the sum identity for cosine, and we found out that equals 0. So let's take a look at class example number 5 here, and see what we have. We have cos a is equal to 3 over 5, and then cos b is equal to 5 over 13. a is an angle between 0 and 90 degrees, or 0 and pi over 2, and b is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. So if we were to draw our angles here, a is between 0 and pi over 2, so a is over here, that is angle a, and then angle b is going to be a separate one here between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. So what is the exact value of cos a plus b? Now we need to think, well, what do we have here? We have cos of a plus b, so cos of a plus b. We know from the identity that's equal to cos of the first one, cos of the second one, minus sine of the first one, and then sine of the second one. Well, what's tricky about this? Well, we have the cos values here, uh, but we don't know what the sine values. In fact, if we take a look at this fourth quadrant, the y values or the sine values are going to be negative. So how do we find out what that y value is? Well, our trusty Pythagorean theorem can help us. Can help us. And so we have three, we have cos of three over five. So if cos a is equal to three over five, that means that you have an x value of 3 and an r value of 5. Well, use, using Pythagorean theorem, we can say that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, which means then that 3 squared plus y squared is equal to 5 squared. And that means that 9 plus y squared is equal to 25. y squared is equal to 25 minus 9, which is 16. And y can either be plus or minus the square root of 16. Well, in this particular case though, a is an angle in the first quadrant here, so that means that y should be a positive 4. Okay, so now we can use y then and find the sine value for a. Now what about the sine value for b? Well, the sine value for b here, we, we know that the cos of b is equal to 5 over 13. So that tells us that the x value is equal to 5, and the y, sorry, the r value, the r value is equal to 13. So using Pythagorean theorem, we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 13, and we have x squared plus, so we have 5 squared plus y squared is equal to 13 squared, and so we have 25 plus y squared is equal to 13 squared, which is 169, we have y squared is equal to 169 minus 25, that's equal to 144. So y then can be actually the plus or minus the square root of 144. So which is it? Is y positive 12 or negative 12? Well, take a look here. b is in the fourth quadrant, so that means the y values are going to be negative. So that helps us define the value for sine b. So back to our equation, we have cos a plus b, this is equal to cos a, which we see right here, that's the value of it, is 3 over 5. Cos b is 5 over 13. But then we need the sine a and sine b. So sine a, here we found out that y is equal to positive 4, so sine a is equal to positive 4 over 
5. So this is 4 over 5. And then for sine b, b is in the fourth quadrant, so y is negative here, so this is negative 12 over 13. So this is what sine b is equal to. So this is negative 12 over 13. Those signs are very important. So 3 times 5 is 15, 5 times 13 is 65, and then we have this minus 4 and this minus 12, so this is going to end up being a positive. So 4 times 12 is 48, and then we also have 5 times 13, which is 65. So here we have 15 plus 48, which is 63 over 65, and this is the exact value of cos of a plus b. Okay, you're ready for your assignment now, and I will see you in class.